everybody oh i'm in like a weird crop layout what's going on there hold on what is that there we go okay we're fixed how's everybody doing today oh so excited to be here i am so excited about today's show because i've got a special guest who is not only special and special to the world of podcasting but very special and near and dear to my heart because she's one of my really good friends that i've met in this online space so today we're going to be welcome Welcoming my friend Crystal Prophet from The Prophet Podcast. She is a podcasting mentor, coach. She's everything podcasting. She's awesome, all around awesome. She's amazing at teaching people how to start, launch, and market their podcast, and quite frankly, make some money from their podcast. So we're going to be talking about some of those things today. But before we get started, as you all know, I got to say hi to everybody. What's going on? Uh, I definitely am going to keep an eye on your questions today. I'm also going to moderate a little bit today. It looks like I got to do a little moderation today in the comments. So those of you watching on YouTube, but yeah, we are live. We are live over on Facebook. We're live in our Facebook community, which if you're not part of, I hope that you will go over and join that. And then of course, we're live on LinkedIn and we're live on YouTube as well. So I always like to give a shout out to my friends watching over on uh, LinkedIn because you know, usually we get most of our live stream viewers from YouTube, of course, on Facebook as well. But look right there, you got Josh hanging out with us over on LinkedIn. So what's up, Josh? Uh, our friends over there watching on LinkedIn. So definitely one of the coolest features about StreamYard is the ability to multi-stream to different platforms. And today we definitely want to do that because there's a lot of people that want to learn about podcasting. So if you are new to the show, my name is Melanie Diane Howe, and this show is all about mastering your marketing. So I love live streaming. Live video is my absolute favorite way to teach people how to market themselves, their business, their organizations, or whatever they want to do. But there's more to being successful in reaching your goals than just going live. And so this shows about all the other aspects of it. We talk about live streaming a lot, of course, but we talk about email list building. We've been talking about, we've talked about webinars, we've talked about podcasting, and today we're going to be definitely diving into how you would start a podcast, because a lot of people are curious about podcasting, but they might be a little overwhelmed, or they may not be sure what all it takes, or quite frankly, they've got this thought in their head that it's super complicated, and there's all these things you have to learn and do, and today I think you're going to learn that it's not as complicated as you think. And my guest today, Crystal Prophet, is a master at breaking it down so that it's easy to understand, very digestible. So we are definitely going to get into that. Uh, so if you have questions, which I see the Creator Classroom already getting ahead of it, posting an awesome question for us today, uh, I definitely want to see those questions related to podcasting and starting a podcast. So if you have one of those, put a Q in front of it. I will put it in the starred comments, and we'll get to some questions a little bit later in the show. So I will go ahead and find those and I will go ahead and use the starred comments feature inside of our StreamYard studio to do that. So definitely um, 
wanted to, someone recognized you from Indiana. What? <laughs> what? I don't even know. So I'm, I haven't read all the comments yet, but you guys are bringing them in hot today. I love it. So definitely excited to see you guys uh, in the comments. Uh, and we've got Lakers, Karen, Dirt, Mel, long time no see. Hey, I've been going live a lot more often on the StreamYard channel every other week. So definitely excited to be back here with y'all. So, okay. So I'm going to, without further ado, I am going to go ahead and we're going to get this going because I'm going to bring Crystal up because we got a lot to cover today. And so if you've got those questions, definitely let us know uh, in the comments what those questions are. So Crystal, I see you down in the studio. Give me a thumbs up that you're ready. I know she is. Awesome. Let's bring up Crystal Profit. What's up, girl? I was giving <laughs> you my, my best jazz hands behind the scenes i'm like i'm ready let's i'm still like frisky it's a friday i'm like let's i know do this. It's frisky so friday i love it yes. i love it so yeah so as i was saying before i brought you up crystal and i have known each other for a number of years now gosh 2019 i think 19. is that right yep. is when yep. we met so definitely became virtual friends and Crystal is kind of my go-to. Whenever I uh, was active in my podcast and I had a question, I'd be like pinging Crystal like, hey, what about this? What about that? And I'd be like, show notes. I hate writing my show notes. Are they really that necessary? And, you know, and it's kind of funny because you kind of have always pinged me a little bit about, you know, video and live video and stuff like that too. So, and you've been a long StreamYard user and you used live video a lot in your yourself and your business and marketing your podcast. So super excited to have you here on the show. And you, uh, those of you might recognize Crystal because she has also created some YouTube videos that are on the StreamYard YouTube channel as well. So definitely go check out some of those videos. Uh, we will probably link to those in the description later uh, after we're live. So Crystal, do me a favor and just tell people a little bit about yourself and exactly what it is you do. I definitely want to give you the opportunity to introduce yourself to the audience today. Yes. Well, I think you did a fantastic job. That was a great introduction, Mel. Thank you so much. And I'm grateful to be here. I was, I didn't get a chance to do it when Mel comes back up. Well, we'll have to show off. We have both of our StreamYard shirts on because <laughs> <laughs> that's how we roll. I didn't even tell her. I was like, we're going to be twinning today. But uh, yeah, I have been doing, uh, I launched my first podcast in 2018. And it was one of those where I don't have an audio engineering degree. I don't have a background in journalism or communications. My background was in marketing and I am just a huge marketing nerd. So when Mel was like, Hey, come on and let's talk about content marketing, podcast marketing and all the things I said, of course, absolutely. So I have just kind of a typical journey of an entrepreneur that's just trying to figure it out as you go. I wasn't really, I didn't grow up saying, I want to be a podcaster one day because it wasn't a thing. And I stumbled into it organically because I was blogging for a long time and I realized I'm a very unsuccessful blogger. <laughs> I'm not great at writing, but I can talk. I love to talk and it's one of the reasons probably why Mel and I get along so well because we both love to talk and we both love to live stream. And so in my journey, I have figured out how to podcast. Actually, to date, I have recorded over 1300 podcast episodes between my two shows and I'm obsessed. I love it so much. So I'm happy to, to dig into the details today into whatever you want to cover, Mel, on getting started with the podcast. We're going to talk about some specific tips that you can use StreamYard to either amplify your podcast reach to help you get started if you don't have any kind of content going already and how to use the tools that are within StreamYard to market your show, edit your show, and just do all the things. So Mel, you let me know. Ooh, where you I go love it. Yeah. It's, it's going to be juicy today, you guys. And honestly, I already, we already have a ton of awesome comments or questions coming in. So yes. we're definitely going to do a little rapid fire Q and A. Yes. So definitely keep those questions coming. We'll get to as many as we can uh, before we end the show, but yeah, we're going to dive in here. But before we do, I definitely wanted to call out a couple of things because StreamYard definitely has been focusing heavily on making sure that the live stream studio can do other things. They've obviously, you know, you can edit your videos now, you can host your videos in there, you can, um, you know, there's the webinar, so StreamYard on air, but one of the most, I think, under known, under known uh, elements of StreamYard is how 
awesome it is for podcasters, not only to do conduct interviews, but also just use the platform to record your podcast. So I love that you pointed that out. We're definitely going to talk about that today. But um, something else that I saw, I saw this comment. I wanted to find it really fast. Someone was mentioning how they, they used. So yeah, here we go. So Tommy Sig Social Club says, I can tell you that Streamer has been absolutely incredible for my podcast, which is fantastic. Yes. So I love to hear that uh, from that uh, 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 channel as well. This is the one I wanted to pull up from the Diz Pod. So Lawrence Wilson says, I co-host a podcast and we use Teams for yesterday's show. It made the show so much better. So those of you that don't know StreamYard Teams, everyone gets a, an extra seat, if you will, uh, that they can use. So you could actually have a backstage producer that's also ha can actively help you co-produce or co-host your show. So if you're live streaming your podcast recording, which we talked about with Rob Greenlee a couple of weeks ago, uh, you know, it's, it's really fantastic where you can actually have some support in there too. And that's one of the also really, in my opinion, kind of really cool things about StreamYard as well when you're going to use it for your podcast. So, all right. So Crystal, I definitely want to jump in today because we have so much to cover, but again, also seeing lots of great questions coming in about yes. all kinds of stuff. So, I mean, like these are, these are great. So people are curious about podcasting and how it might relate to them. So we're definitely going to jump into that for sure. So Crystal, I know that you've kind of got this formula, if you will. Yes. And also we've got something for everybody. So stay tuned till the end of the show. Uh, Crystal, we've got a free uh, thing we want to make sure that you all get access to that we share with you here on today's stream. So stay tuned towards the end of the show. We'll share that with you. It's a, a really great resource that Crystal has for everybody. But um, so you've got this formula, Crystal, why don't you break down the formula for us? But before we do, I just wanted to hear. So I like to kind of talk about this because a lot of people I think there's two things that happen. I think people think, one, oh, my business doesn't fit a podcast. Mm -hmm. Or they think, podcasting's been around forever since the iPod came about. Literally, that's why it's called podcasting. But, you know, Rob Greenlee was on the show, uh, and I know you're familiar with Rob, uh, a few weeks ago, and he was talking about how, you know, it's not, it's growing, it's continuing to grow. And mm -hmm. it's still this amazing format that people can consume, and it's not going anywhere. So even if somebody's not started a podcast yet, there's still plenty of opportunity to get this and and to create this this awesome way to market yourself. So, what are your thoughts on that? I always like to just kind of get a quick pulse check on that, and then we'll jump into those essentials of of mar starting your podcast. Well, I feel like this audience specifically, if you're interested in streaming and being on video, you actually have a leg up from the people that just want to do audio only because the big shift that I've seen in the last few years is video podcast and people putting like, you know, a face to a name, like you feel so much more connected, like the person that was like, Oh, it's mail time. Like I'm excited. Like you have this deeper connection with Mel because you see her face and you have this ability to have this deeper human connection whenever you can see people. So I think that you are in the right place. If you're thinking about starting a podcast, it's actually going to be easier than streaming. I hope that everyone was like, yes, thank goodness, because you can either just take the audio directly from all of your live streams that you're already doing and maybe zhuzh it up a little bit and edit it out to be something that's a little bit different. So people are encouraged to go check out the audio version. Or what you could do is do things in the back office where no one sees it publicly until you want it to go live. Like there's so many different things. And actually Mel mentioned the previous videos I've done with StreamYard. You can see how you record a podcast in a Facebook group and then you don't actually air it until it's live. Like there's so many fun things that you can do to have some exclusivity to your streaming audience and then you repurpose it on your podcast. So there's some fun things that we can do. You can put some questions in the comments, but like Mel said, I, one of my principles is to always add value. So I want you to walk away with some value today and we can just get right into the process and then we'll have room for tons of questions at the end of this and get really specific. So is yeah. that where you want to take this now? Definitely. I love it. I'm okay. super pumped. So why don't you uh, take us through, what do you call it again? It's my prep -a method. So you prep know, Mel knows this. I, I used to be a cheerleader. So I'm always like, give me a P, give me an R. Oh, Mel froze for me. I don't know oh, no. she froze. Pretty Hopefully else. not. You froze like this. It was perfect. It was Am I back now? I'm back. Yeah. It's probably because I just jumped and my entire desk like shook a little bit. So yeah. who knows? I might have had a loose wire there. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Okay. prep -a yeah. method. Okay. prep -a method. So what this is, and I'm just going to run through it real fast, and then we can go a little bit deeper in how you can use StreamYard in all five steps of this process. So what it is, is 
it's really simple. And if you have a podcast, you're going to be like, oh, I already do that. I just didn't know that's what it's called. So prep them is P is play in, R is record, E edit, P publish, and M is market. So the prep -a method is just something that I really needed to do for myself to make sure it's my mental checklist. Okay. I planned it. Now I have to record it. I need to edit it. I have to publish it wherever I want it to go. And most people stop there. Most people only get to the publishing phase of putting it out on their podcast, like on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, or just putting it directly on YouTube, and they don't actually market it. So the key to success here, in my opinion, is spending a lot of time in the planning phase so that you can record strategic content. So it takes you less time to edit. So it's easy to publish and it's simple to market the thing that you created. Because at the end of the day, we all know if you're not telling anyone about what you're creating, it's going to be hard to grow it. So that's why I think this process is so important and it's really simple, but let's dive into planning. So I actually took some notes here because I wanted to not forget the specific features that I wanted to point out that StreamYard has. So when you're planning content and you know exactly what you want the episode to be, you can go ahead and schedule it. And this is actually a little, a little secret here when, you know, for, if you want to know more about marketing bonus, planning, I know it's like bonus on top of bonuses here. When you're planning your content and you're scheduling it out, you're uploading your thumbnail and you're putting it out and it's scheduled on your channel that's actually marketing. So you're like killing two birds with one stone by planning your episode ahead of time and letting people see like, oh, Mel's going live on Friday. Like, I, what is that? What is that about? She's talking about marketing. She's talking about podcasting. I think I want to go to that. I want to see what that's about. So planning your content is so important. And then we could get into so many nuances of having the right CTAs and making sure you have your website URL or whatever kind of calls to action that you want to have. But planning is where I spend 45% of my time. So we said we have five steps to the prep -um process. I spend the majority in the planning phase. So again, it's easier to record. It's easier to edit publish and market everything. So spend more time planning, whether it's outlining, scripting, however you go about the method. I don't care if you write it on, you know, a Kleenex on your desk, like just do some planning and it makes it a lot easier when you do sit down to record. So I love that. Do you, okay. Do you have any questions yeah. about that? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So quick question for you. Why am I behind you now? I'm behind you now. <laughs> oh, I don't know. It's fine. So that's fucking me. Hold on. <laughs> I'm going back. I'm going, I know, right? I'm going back to this one. Okay. So planning your podcast. I definitely agree. I think, I think that it's one of those things where the, if you plan it appropriately, then the ripple effect is the stuff down the road is simpler yeah. and easier for you to do. But just a quick question as a little bonus. So when it comes to planning your podcast, what are, what, I mean, just real quick, can you just run us through high level? What, maybe someone can, uh, how they can approach planning their podcast. Just again, because we could probably do an entire show on planning your yes. podcast, which maybe yes. we should. But anyway, just real fast, like what is, what goes into that planning your podcast? Just so that everyone understands, well, what does it mean to plan my podcast? Exactly. So I think of it, I go back to elementary, like writing class where you have the intro, the middle, and the end, you have the outro. Keep it as simple as that. Cause I know people are like, well, duh, that sounds simple enough. It is that easy to keep it that simple. If I were to pull up one of my like show notes that I use for planning, I use Asana to plan everything in my business and in my content. And it literally says at the top of the page, intro, middle or body. And those are the main points I'm trying to make. And then I have an outro. It's probably what most people are doing here with their scripts. They're like, okay, I'm going to have the intro countdown timer. And then I'm going to say a little bit about what's going on today. And then I'm going to get into what I'm talking about. And then I have to find a way to say like, and subscribe, make sure, you know, you come back to the channel next week. It is literally that simple. And when you can keep it that simple, you're more likely to show up again week after week or whatever consistency looks like for you and your show. So keep it simple and you can always get fancier later. If you start finding yourself like, oh, this is a little too simplistic. I need it a little bit meatier. I need to add more notes to it. Then feel free to do that. 
But for me, it's just having those three key things. What's the intro? What's the middle? What are the main points? What's the number one thing that you want somebody to walk away from that podcast episode with? And that should be the most important in the body. And then what is the outro? How are you going to end this thing? And I always tell people, I love my tagline. My tagline is, keep it up. We all have to start somewhere. And that's what I say at the end of every single one of my episodes. So if you can create a fun tagline, then that makes it a little bit easier. Uh, yeah, we, you and I have talked about this, how I sometimes have a hard time ending yeah. shows, <laughs> ending videos. And you're like, just create like the same, just say the same thing at the end of every one. Every I was single like, time. I was like, actually it makes sense. And a lot of people do that. So I love yeah. that tip about the whole kind of ending tagline thing. So yeah, that's fantastic. Now, uh, outside of that, do you recommend that people create a schedule, like plan out a bunch of ideas and then have it all plotted out. I mean, I always recommend having that schedule does a couple of things. It kind of empowers you to know that you already have your ideas because half the time coming up, what am I going to talk about on the next show? But planning ahead, do you want them to plan pretty far ahead as well when it comes to planning that the show as well? Yeah. So I do two things. So I have the messy version because I have to have a place. It's kind of like the whiteboard version mm -hmm. just on my computer. And that's my Google Sheets. So I have a three month, it's a quarterly calendar that I keep. And that's where I'll throw in ideas. Or if I record an episode, I'm like, oh, this is when that one's going to air. So then I know, you know, next time someone asks me a question on my YouTube channel, I go and I grab that comment and I say, this would make a great YouTube video would make a great podcast episode. So I'll grab that screenshot and I'll drop it in there. I don't title it. I don't come up with, oh, like what's the whole, I don't do the whole outline. I just grab that idea and I throw it into my Google sheet. And then later down the road, when I'm actually setting a content calendar, that is my accountability in Asana where I'm saying on this day, this episode will air. Then I go in there and I start planning. But what I've seen with the clients and students that I've helped is having that like 20 ideas, like just sit down. If this is the only thing you get from today is sit down and write down 20 ideas. And why, why 20? 20 is the magic number because that's 20 podcast episodes. That's 20 weeks of content. That's like roughly the first few months of your podcast or your YouTube channel that you can have where you're not saying every single week, well, what do I talk about now? Right. Because that's what keeps people from stopping. Like they just, they just they're like, oh, no one's watching anyway. No one's listening anyway. And I don't have an idea. So I might as well just quit. No, we are not doing that. We are not having that approach. I want you to have so many ideas that you're like, oh, I'm excited. Oh, and then this idea that went well. So I'm going to do one that's kind of like this. So I have a Google sheet with just a running list of ideas. And then I take those ideas and I make it a more formal content calendar in Asana. So that's nice. my approach. So you have like a two, two phase approach. I love that yep. approach because kind of, kind of lets you be creative brainstorm. Yes. And then when you and go messy. into refining and truly scheduling it, yes. it's like, okay, here's what really makes sense. So, because yeah. not every idea in those brainstorming sessions is a good one. Sometimes we have no. those bad ones and, too, but. And I hate you know. it too, when people like, when you put yourself in a content calendar where it's like, okay, it's this day and I have to record this episode. Yeah. Rigid. But mm -hmm. I, I turn into a toddler where I'm like, I don't want to do that today. <laughs> I don't want to talk about email marketing on my podcast. I want to talk about, you know, threads, like threads is a new thing. Like yeah. I want to, you know, so I allow for some of that like shiny object syndrome to set in and be able to still talk about something that's on my list, but I'm not so frigid with, it has to go out on this specific date. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't like to do that in my content calendar. Awesome. I love it. So Anna says, I plan at least one month ahead. I try to stay with uh, th very, every three months. So yeah, yeah, so that's cool. That's real cool. Awesome. I love it. So let's jump into the next part of the prepum method, the, the profit prepum method. I'm kind of going to add a little to it. So yeah. Yeah. So probably the thing people think about a lot, which is, of course, recording your podcast, as you mentioned. So talk to us about that and break that one down for us. Yeah. So what's cool about just recording, I mean, this is where you're obviously going to record, whether it's just audio only, it's audio and video. Um, what I love about StreamYard, what you can do specifically is you can have it where you're recording and it's unlisted or it's recording only. So it's not that kind of fear that some people have. Like if you have a little bit of like anxiety about it's live and what if I mess up and what if this happens? Like you could just, uh, Melanie and I talked about this years ago when we first started using StreamYard. We were like, let's create a Facebook group of just you and me. <laughs> let's like do a <laughs> bunch of tests in there. I don't know. If, do you remember that, Mel? Where it was oh, like, yeah. We're like, uh, 
let's go live. I don't know. Like, let me I, try this new feature. <laughs> it's definitely fun. I always recommend everyone should create what I call a, you know, Facebook group sandbox, which yes. you and a, a couple of your friends just get in there and just play with the features and try things out. And every yeah. once in a while, you'll catch each other and it's actually pretty comical. It's pretty fun. Oh, so, it's, but yes. it's, it's <laughs> incredible to have this, but it's a safe space. Like you're yes. creating a safe space, like to learn, to make mistakes, to try out new features and maybe just test some ideas. So this is what I love about StreamYard is you can have these, you know, isolated groups that you can create on your own, or you can use the unlisted or studio only feature if you don't want it to go live. Cause I have mm -hmm. a lot of people tell me this, they're like, well, I want to put this on the podcast and the YouTube channel, but I only want like my publishing schedule is this, like maybe I wanted this to go live on Tuesday, but I want this one to go live on Wednesday or Friday or whatever your schedule is, your cadence. So utilize those tools of having it air it, you know, or um, air it whenever you record. So live, just like Mel and I are, or if you want to do it as unlisted on your YouTube channel or create it in a Facebook group that's private and only accessible to you. Or here's like an exclusive, like, oh, that's a lean in moment of if you have a Facebook group of your students, your clients, your community, like, and you want to say, hey, join this group and you get first dibs access on what's coming up on the channel, what's coming up in the podcast. So it gets people excited about having that exclusivity. And then you could do some fun Q&A at the end or whatever else, you know, that you find fun. But um, definitely recording in StreamYard is fantastic, especially because it has the feature for you to record and then download audio or video separately. This was a game changer back in the day when, because I'm like, I've been using StreamYard so long that I don't think this was originally available when I first started using it. And it's just a game changer because it makes it easier if you want to, you know, we'll get into editing in a second, but if you want to just use the audio version or just use the video, then you can absolutely do that within StreamYard. Yeah. It, uh, I'm going to edit this really fast. This is driving me crazy. One sec. Hold, please. <laughs> Speaking, okay. this, we're about to talk about it. There we go. So you're good. Fixed it. Okay, I'm fixed. <laughs> All right. So uh, I that was definitely not one of the original features. So the, yeah. the separate audio has probably been a feature for maybe three years now. It's okay. been a while. And yeah. that to me is absolutely when StreamYard became an, a very competitive um, you know, solution for, hey, I can just use this for recording a podcast now too. I can, exactly. it, it just totally changed the game to your point about repurposing your live videos into a podcast. And I know we have a number of people who in the in the audience that repurpose, they go live, they do a show. For example, this, this particular show that Crystal and I are doing, this discussion could absolutely be downloaded as a separate audio file and then edited and put into a podcast. Now, on top of that, that I just want to make sure everybody is aware of as well, is that you can now change your settings where if you do have a guest, which I know a lot of you have been talking about guests in the comments, you can uh, download those both of those audio tracks separately now, which some of you are like, well, why would I need to do that? Well, oh. sometimes it's nice to have that separate audio because if my audio maybe is too low or maybe you know it's just kind of funky or something, there's weird background, you could edit both of those audio um, tracks. So basically I can make my voice come up louder without making Crystal's voice come up louder. Whereas if it was one audio track, you kind of have it's one or nothing. So that is also a really fantastic feature in regards that they added as well, maybe a year, year and a half ago um, when it comes to that. Because again, I mean, I think StreamYard sees that if you're a live streamer, then you are a really good candidate to be a podcaster as well. Because even all that planning that Crystal talked about all really relevant in regards to how you can plan your live streams. So definitely um, a, a really great thing. So um, so w outside of, um, you know, so recording your podcast, I know we're not going to get into equipment or gear today, everybody, but I know a lot of you are probably curious. Yeah. So what are what is like the bottom baseline requirement for someone to record their podcast? Of course, they have to have some sort of audio capture software or something to create the file, right? Which we just talked about how StreamYard is a perfect solution for that. But talk about microphones. Do they need a fancy microphone? Do they need to start with a fancy microphone? Like what's what's kind of critical there? What do you think? For everybody that can see it. Oh, wrong way. This is my, and I'm going to point at it wrong. There you That's go. Right here. It's a $20 microphone that I got on Amazon that I used in the beginning. Would I recommend this today to get started? Probably if you're recording in an area that my office has a ton of echo. And so I today record using a dynamic microphone. 
this is fancy. This is expensive. I don't tell people to go and buy this as their starter mic. I tell them, to, I, I can't do it the right way. I'm like, I'll turn around. I tell them to get the $20 microphone because you don't know if you're going to love podcasting and you don't know if you're going to love live streaming. So I am frugal. I'm cheap. Let's just call it. I'm cheap. <laughs> and so I don't like to invest in something unless I know that I'm really going to love it. And I'm going to use it. I mean, back in the day, I used to tell people to get their Apple iPhones and record because that mic on those, uh, those headphones, yeah. like, they were fantastic. So you could do it right on your phone. It doesn't have to be something that's super fancy. The most important thing is it has to be audio that people can listen to mm -hmm. because there is a difference because I could record on here and I could talk right here like this. And it's going to sound terrible because I'm right up against it. Same here. If I use my fancy mic, I'm not going to do it because it's going to blow everybody's ears out. <laughs> but if I were to talk really loud into this and have all these mouth noises, it wouldn't be great, even though this is a super fancy microphone. So there are some basic techniques that you can use whenever you're recording. And it doesn't matter about your microphone, where it is. I've recorded in my car, in my minivan, waiting for my son at his orthodontist appointment. I've recorded on walks. I've recorded on my AirPods. It's all about how you can really judge the sound. And I've had to delete a whole bunch of episodes because they just weren't great. Remember the 1300 episodes I talked about earlier? There's probably <laughs> double that that I've deleted and no one's ever heard before because I'll realize like, oh, it just sounds terrible. So make sure that you're doing like audio checks to see, does this sound great in my car, on my phone, if I'm just listening to it in my earbuds, like do some testing to make sure that everything sounds good. Awesome. So I'm going to um, post a quick link uh, to your YouTube channel because you've got a lot of content that a lot, you break down a lot of these things that you're talking about. So, you know, those of you that are wanting to kind of learn a little bit more, I am going to post that in there. I'm going to tell you not to go there because you need to stay here because we still yes, have more to cover stay stay later, here. go later or go there real quick, subscribe and come right back. That's what I would say. So, <laughs> uh, let me put that in here real quick in the comments. So went ahead and posted that. So if you're watching on YouTube, you definitely at Facebook, you will definitely see that comment. If you're over on LinkedIn, you'll need to hop over to one of those other social platforms so you can see that comment. So, okay. Recording your podcast. Agreed. I definitely agree. I think the audio quality is important. However, you don't have to go spend $500. In fact, yeah. especially in today's technology market, you do not have to spend a lot of money to have an amazing sounding, you know, podcast. So I definitely love it. So, okay. So Crystal, let's jump into your next uh, part of your prepum method, which is the thing that scares a lot of people. And that is <laughs> editing. editing your podcast. So I actually, I just did an Instagram post about this because it was all about people that spend hours and hours and hours of their lives editing an episode, but they don't market it and they don't tell people about it. Like we were talking about earlier, people mm. will spend time in all the other places. And I'm like, I don't care if you spend five hours editing an episode, if you don't tell people about it, then you're not going to grow. Your content won't have a higher reach. So editing is important. Like we were just talking about, you want to make sure it's something that people can listen to, that it's enjoyable, but you don't have to spend hours and hours. You don't have to be an audio engineer and you don't have to use super fancy equipment and technology that's confusing. You can keep it very simple. And so one of the things that I love about StreamYard actually, so let's say that you have a YouTube channel and you want to strip the audio so that you can publish it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all the other podcast platforms, you could actually edit that video in StreamYard first, then you could download it and turn it into an MP3 or a WAV file and be able to use it. So there are capabilities built into the StreamYard platform for you to be able to edit your audio directly in it. You're editing the video, but once you export it, you will have the final version that you want to use. And then you'd be able to just go ahead and put it on all those other platforms. So that's the first thing. But the second thing is when you have your editing software figured out, whether you're stripping your audio files, remember earlier we talked about just downloading the audio and you're using a tool like Audacity, GarageBand, Hindenburg, you still don't need to spend hours editing your audio. 
especially when it comes to an interview, try to keep the conversation casual, try to make it to where it's you and your other people, you know, the people that you're interviewing, whether it's two other people or one other person, don't be so obsessed. This is where I find people obsessing about, well, I said the word like, like seven times. And I just, I need to go and cut that out. I said, um, too many times I breathed a little bit too hard into the microphone and I need to go cut those out. And here's the thing after recording so many podcast episodes, the thing that has helped me in getting better without having those things in there, it's not editing. It's just recording myself. The more I record myself and I listen back and I'm like, Ooh, I said, um, too many times, instead of spending all that time, wasting that time, editing every single little thing out. I just know next time I'm going to spend more time planning so that I don't get lost in my own train of thought. So that I feel better prepared and I feel more confident because I know exactly what I'm going to say. And I don't feel like, Oh, like I, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have said that. And at the end of the day, you are a human. Can, can we just point this out real fast for everybody that's AI crazed right now that they're like, oh, I can just, you know, type it into some software and like a, let a robot talk for me. People are really drawn to mistakes. Okay. Can we just throw this? We, I have so many of my mentors that I love listening to their podcast when they mess up because they do so many other things. Incredible. They show up fancy on Instagram. They do things on YouTube that are unbelievable. They speak on stage and it is flawless. But when I hear them mess up just a little bit on their podcast, I love them even more. So I think that that humanity of not having everything be completely perfect can actually work in your favor, in your benefit. So I know that this is like a controversial opinion and most people will say, no, it has to be pristine and perfect. That if that's what the way you want to go, then outsource it, hire a podcast editor then. <laughs> that's I, I I'll, no, it. that's a great point. I mean, I, I definitely think editing is sort of like this. I mean, you know how I feel about editing, but yeah. you already know how I feel about editing. I loathe editing. I, I actually... I just, I, I, I overthink it. I get too much of a perfectionist. One of the reasons I love live streaming, yes. there's no editing. There's no editing. Yes. Yes. You just, you're live, you're there. And, and those of you that watch the show know that things go wrong. My audio gets funky. I mean, things happen and it's just part of it. So I think that that is also what goes along with this authenticity factor that you're talking about or this real human factor, because I agree. I think AI is a great tool. I think it can help us in so many ways, but it cannot replace a real yes. live human being. And I think that, and I said this a few uh, weeks ago here, I think even on the show, I think it was here where I was talking about how I think AI is great. I think we need to embrace it, but I think it's going to create even more thirst for real human mistakes and interaction and raw and authenticity, like to what you were saying. So, you know, if you just needed that to hear that from Crystal, to give you permission to go ahead and just not overthink the, your podcast episodes or what you're doing or even your videos and just let yourself have those ums. Let yourself have those weird mistakes in there. Let yourself go off script and riff a little bit. Like it's what people are are thriving for. And I think Crystal, in my opinion, on a podcast, even more so because when I'm on a walk and I've got like Amy Porterfield in my ear or Jasmine Starr in my ear or somebody, I am I feel like I'm sitting across the table having coffee with them and chatting with them versus this perfectly polished recording. And yeah. I, because I listen to those sometimes and they almost sound robotic versus just them being real, right? So I definitely love that you pointed out that you don't need to over edit the podcast, let it be you. You know, and again, if you're the kind of person that just really wants that perfect, polished version of it, there are definitely listeners out there for you. But if it's what's holding you back from launching or growing your podcast or creating more episodes, then again, maybe it's time to hire that out. So if someone was going to hire that out, do you recommend some of the virtual assistants that are out there like on you know, Fiverr and Upwork and, and some of those um, places, or do you recommend them go somewhere else? Yeah, I actually, I have a friend that does this really well and it, his, his company, it's a production agency. It's called honest mm. podcast. I mean, what a great name. First of all, yeah, I love like, it. Shout out Travis. He, he actually used to work at Buzzsprout and now he's gone out on his own and does podcast editing, but you know, he is more of a premium option. So if you're looking mm -hmm. for that, like, Ooh, I want it the fanciest that it can be. And I want it to be flawless. He is your go-to, but there can be some podcast editors out there that can help you at a lower cost 
but you know, you're sometimes you get what you pay for. I've heard really terrible stories about people that outsource it. So what I've decided to invest in is a premium software. So mm. I have invested like tools like Descript, tools like I use Hindenburg personally mm -hmm. for all of my editing because it levels everything. I can drop if you and I, Mel, we have an interview and I take both of our audios from StreamYard and I drop it into Hindenburg, it automatically levels everything and all the everything's at the right decibel that I want it at. And so there are some tools that you can invest in if you don't want to mess with audio. You're like, I don't want to be an audio engineer. I don't want to watch YouTube videos on how to do this. Then I invest or I recommend investing in the software that can help you do those things. I love that. I want to point out what Square Table Degenerates uh, is, is saying here because I think it's really important. <laughs> He's always pretty funny in his comments. If you're getting $20,000 a show, sure, edit. But if you're getting eight bucks a video that you spent 20 hours editing, bro, that's like 60 cents an hour. Go work at Taco Bell to get money. Right. Yeah. But I think what I think what our friend is trying to say here is as you're getting started, you don't need to, this is just like live streaming. I say this all the time. It's okay to start out a little scrappy. And if that means you got to edit it yourself and it's minimal editing, because quite frankly, you either don't have the time, don't like it, or don't know how, that's okay. As you grow and as you excel more, you can start to outsource some of these things. And so don't feel like you have to raise all this money to launch your podcast. So I think that's a great point is, you know, unt until you're making money, be careful about what you're spending money on. To yep. your point, don't go spend, you know, a ton of money on your Brit, your first microphone, unless you just have that money and you're ready to make that investment. But um, it can become a bit of a financial commitment if you go a little overboard. So, yes. okay, well, let's keep going because I know we've got two more aspects. So if you're just now joining us, we are talking to Crystal Profit from the Profit Podcast about the uh, the essentials of starting a podcast. And so she's got this really great formula uh, that she calls the Prepum Method. And I'm uh, going to go ahead and, and say it's the Profit Prepum Method. Uh, so we already talked about planning your podcast. We talked about recording your podcast. We just covered a bit about editing your podcast. And now we're going to get into kind of the bells and whistles of making it go somewhere. So talk about publishing your podcast, Crystal. Well, before we move on, I was thinking it should be oh. called the Profit Prepum Process. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> Just to make it the even PPP. more confusing. The, the PPP. The PPP. The Triple P. That's what I like it. Oh, yeah, I like it. Okay, <laughs> okay. all right. <laughs> so publishing, publishing your podcast. So if you are doing a video podcast, this is actually easy. If you are using StreamYard already, because all you have to do is click that little publish button for that video to go out onto your YouTube channel, whether it's a live stream, like what we're doing today, or it is recorded in your studio, and then you eventually want to publish it on YouTube, or it's an unlisted video where maybe you record your interview with your guest, and then you eventually schedule it and publish it out on your YouTube channel. Those are a few ways that you can publish your podcast content on YouTube using StreamYard. Now, another thing is if you are like, I want to use the content that's on my YouTube channel and put it somewhere else like Apple Podcasts and all these other places, then you would need to download that, that episode, what we were just talking about. You edit it, it's all pretty, it's fantastic. You're gonna download it and then you're gonna upload it to a podcast host like Buzzsprout. I've been using Buzzsprout since day one. It's the podcast host I always recommend. But when it comes to publishing, they make it really easy for you to just upload that wave or MP3 file and publish it out to all the directories. And like Mel said earlier, I have tons of these videos on my YouTube channel for you to go check it out. But publishing is probably the step where I spend the least amount of time. Because once you get a process down, you have everything set up. It'll take a bit to, you know, originally, it's kind of like setting up your YouTube channel for the first time. You have to set it up. You have to connect your Google account and do all these things that you don't even think about once you've been doing it for a while. You're like, oh yeah, I did that in the beginning. That's kind of how it is to set up your podcast host. You get everything connected. You're on all the platforms. And now I don't even think about my podcast showing up in all these places because when I upload an MP3 or my WAV file, it just goes out on the scheduled date. And so when it comes to publishing, it actually segues nicely. And we can go ahead, you know, unless you have questions, Mel, go ahead and segue from publishing to marketing. Because what I like to do is once you publish an episode, I like to use the content that you use there 
the title, the description, the calls to action that you're using in your podcast episode, those will also be the key things that I'm sharing when I'm marketing that episode and trying to get people to listen or watch or be engaged with that content. Yeah, I think so. Just before we move into marketing, I just want to make sure everybody understands. So there, and, and Crystal's right. She's got a ton of great resources that sort of break this down for you. But publishing your podcast used to be pretty complicated. And she's right. All of these hosting platforms that are out there, Lisbon, Buzzsprout, you know, there's a bunch of them out there. They make it extremely easy now. So yeah. while you may have to pay a very small subscription fee, as little as like $9 a month, I mean, or even less than that, there are free ones out there too. But it really does simplify the process. So I think people think, oh, I've got to upload it to Spotify. I got to upload it to this. I got to do it. No, you don't. So all those hosting platforms, basically you upload it there and they push it out to all the places. Now to Crystal's point, there's a little bit of an upfront setup that you need to go through. So, you know, you want to create your, your podcast artwork. You want to come up with a title for your podcast, a description for your podcast show. So you do a little bit of that, of course, and that probably goes into that planning stage that Crystal talked about earlier. But if you already have a channel, if you already have a YouTube channel, some of that legwork is probably done and it's going to be really similar uh, if, if the content's going to be the same. But so outside of those just those media assets and things, it really is pretty easy once you go through the setup and connecting all those different platforms. And after that, it's like, she's right. It's like, boom. I mean, you're done. You're ready. You got your title, your notes, upload. And like literally your podcast is out there for the world to listen to. So it really is pretty simple. There's a lot of options out there, but Crystal's got a lot of great content on breaking all that down for you as well. So I just wanted to point that out because people get like all funky, like RSS feeds. What's an RSS feed? I'm, I like, know. I'm like, I don't know. You don't need to know. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's going to ask you for the RSS feed and it's just some weird link. And like, I don't know what it is. It's like one yeah. of those leprechaun things. I literally am like, I don't know. It's just how they make magic happen. It's one of those things. Yeah. So, but yeah. you don't need to know that. You used to need to know that stuff you don't anymore. So well, if you researched this a while back and you kind of abandoned it, it's a lot easier than it used to be for sure. Well, and one thing I want to point out too is YouTube announced at their most recent podcast movement that pretty soon YouTube will be ingesting RSS feeds. So if you have an audio only podcast and you live stream, so they're like two separate things right now in mm -hmm. the future, YouTube will also be able to take your podcast RSS feed and push it out. I don't know the, all the intricacies and the details of it, but that is some, it's a, just another reason to have an audio podcast and to be able to just reach a more organic audience. Because the thing with podcasting, and we can talk about this, you know, in the Q and A too, but yeah. the thing with podcasting is discoverability sucks. Like, let's just call <laughs> it what it is. Like, it's not as great as YouTube. YouTube is incredible for searchability, SEO. We could nerd out about all of those things. But with podcasting, I always tell people to utilize all of your different channels to grow your podcast audience together instead of relying only solely on Apple podcast or Spotify to push it out into all of in front of the right people, because it's just a lot harder to grow that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. I think it's, it's good to have all the different, um, approaches working together. You maximize your, your growth yeah. that way for sure. So yeah. Okay. Let's jump into the fifth element of the process. And that is of course your favorite. I think favorite. if I'm not, if I'm not, I mean, I think, I feel like I know you really well and it's definitely your favorite. So okay. talk to us about marketing your podcast. Okay. So let's start with the StreamYard tools that you can use first. So if we went through everything we've already talked about, we talked about plan, record, edit, publish the marketing piece. Remember we talked about most people will stop at publishing. They're like, well, I put it out there. People should just find it. They should just know that it's out there and find it organically. No, you have to tell people about your show. And the things that I love about StreamYard is your ability. And I know this is a newer feature. I don't know exactly how old it is, but being able to take your video and chop it up into smaller clips and post it directly to YouTube shorts, publish it to Instagram reels. That is a game changer. That is a game changer that you can utilize to market your show. You could tell people and say, hey, you could actually just create the short and not publish it directly to YouTube and export it into Canva and do some fun things like voiceover or you know, put some graphics on there or some text, maybe a strategic call to action for people to join you in your next live stream or to watch your next interview or join your exclusive Facebook group just for your podcast listeners. There's so many things that you can do 
but you have to first have all the other four pieces done. You have to plan, you got to record, you got to edit, you have to publish, and then you can say, okay, how am I going to market this thing? And it really goes all the way back to the planning at the beginning. If you can say, all right, this is going to be the number one key takeaway for this episode today, then you can use that to market it at the end. Because, you know, there was a recent episode that I did on my show where it was all about the three best AI tools for creators and specifically podcasters. And I wanted it to be something that people knew, oh, this is the resource that I need to look at because it covers the planning, the production, and the publishing of a podcast episode. So that's what I shared on social media. It's what I shared on my email list. It's what I put in my YouTube channel. I said, these are the only AI tools that you need to use. Don't get overwhelmed by everything else. So learn how to market, use the tools that are in StreamYard to your benefit and play around with them. You'll find that, oh, okay, I like these short ones that are 60 seconds, but actually the ones that are 15 seconds where I grab, you know, Melanie's audio because she's saying something that's incredible or she's saying the word hoot nanny. She kills hoot me nanny. every time she says hoot nanny. It absolutely kills me every time. But it's just one of those things that like, You'll get to know. I actually saw a question come in earlier that we'll get to in the Q&A, but it was about like, how do you decide like what's good and what's bad in your content? People will tell you. They'll tell you what their likes. They'll tell you what their comments. They'll tell you what their downloads. They'll tell you what their watches. So don't be so focused on well, what's good and what's the right thing to share? Just get in there and start throwing spaghetti against the wall and seeing what sticks because that is the way that you go in and you're able to grow your show, to market your show, to reach a new audience. But you have to be strategic about not just saying, well, I put it out there. I hit publish. People should just come, right? It's just not the case anymore. You have to make the effort to market your show strategically and to share it with the people that you know your message can help. So that's it's my It's not spiel. the field of dreams. You yes. can't just build it and they'll come. No. Yes, I totally no. agree. So, okay, I've got a question about, this has been fantastic, Crystal. Thank you. And we are about to jump into answering those questions. I've got yeah. about 10 or 11 questions in our starred comments queue. So if you posted a question, I and it's related to podcasting, if it wasn't, I didn't, I didn't start it. But <laughs> if it's a, a question you have about podcasting, we'll do a rapid fire here real quick with Crystal and get those questions answered. And then we are going to share with you that awesome freebie that I told you guys about that Crystal has uh, prepared for you all. So first, but question, I think this is a, a question that comes up a lot when it comes to launching your podcast. So you've planned it, you've recorded it, you've edited it, you've. You're almost going to publish it. <laughs> publish it, and you've marketed it, prep them. Uh, you've done all these things, so you're ready to go. I love this question. I want to hear your opinion on it. Should you launch with one episode or should you launch with multiple episodes? Yeah, this is a really good question. The first thing that I always tell people, as soon as you know the name of your podcast and when you want to launch it, you should put out a trailer episode. And this could literally be 15 seconds. It doesn't have to be this like, 30 minute episode. No, it's like, Hey, my name's Crystal. This is the name of this podcast. This is when it's dropping. Okay. Bye. You know, see you then. Like it doesn't have to be, but that piece right there, it serves many purposes because it's starting to market your show. Cause now you can tell people, Hey, by the way, go ahead and go subscribe because I'm dropping this podcast. And that is your CTA for the next month of your life. Let's say you're, you're launching a podcast 30 days from now. That is what you're going to tell people everywhere on your social channels, in your emails. And that really builds the momentum for your show by telling people, Hey, this thing is coming. Here's the name of it. But then the next piece to your question is, should you launch with one to, let's say, five episodes? Back in the day, I used to tell people, yeah, the more the better. But now I've settled in the camp of one to three episodes because there is a launch mentality that I have found. I've worked with hundreds, thousands of podcasters at this point, and some people have a different launch approach. Some people are mm -hmm. like, I've had this thing inside of me, and I finally have the courage to launch it. I just need to put it out there. I don't even care. Then I say, go for it. Launch it. Put it out there, sister. Make it happen. And then have other people that are like, like I'm, I'm working with someone right now. They told me they're launching in February of 2024. So they're going the strategic, like they're treating it like it's a book launch. And they're mm -hmm. like, I'm getting all these people on board and I'm going to have all these, you know, like moving pieces. So 
you can, I mean, it's a total spectrum of where you land on how you want to launch a podcast. But at the end of the day, I always tell people have something that people are left wanting more. That's what you should do. So if you can only launch with one episode, make it so good at the end that people are like, dang, I cannot wait to hear what their next yeah. episode is going to be. And then if you're going to launch with three episodes, then make those so juicy that again, they're saying, I cannot wait. Like I have a book, it's called start a binge worthy podcast. And it's, yep. it's from all of these elements of making it binge worthy. Where like, we've all seen those movies where it's like, Oh, it's a cliffhanger. And I just, I can't like, I want to know like, what's the next thing? What's the next episode? I watched this show hijack on Apple. I don't know if anybody has seen this. It's so good. It's with Idris Elba and it's a mini series and every single episode ended. And I was like, we got to watch another one. Like just one more. We have <laughs> right. to watch another one. So start studying those cliffhangers that you see in different forms of media and ask, how can I apply that to my content? How can I apply it to the launch of my episodes? And that way you'll have people ready and willing and wanting to just like, oh, they're salivating for your next piece of content. Yeah, I, I definitely think that I, I love the idea of the trailer. I love the idea of whatever you decide to do, whether it's one episode to launch or three episodes to launch, you know, you want to make sure that you think about the fact that these are going to be the first episodes that people are going to listen to. Don't overthink it where you're like, oh, it has to be so perfect because it's the first. Yes. No, I think to Crystal's point is you want to just make sure that you're setting the stage for what they're going to, what they can expect, but also want them yearning for more. So I, I personally love the three episode launch. However, I like the idea of you kind of making them be like the first three. Think about watching something on Netflix to Crystal's point. The first three episodes are introducing you to the characters. They're siding up the story. That's what you want to do. So if you can create those first three episodes where people are like, they listen to the first one, they're like, okay, I'm going to the next one. Okay, I'm going yeah. to, they binge those first few. They're totally all in now. I feel like if they listen to the first three like that, they're all in. They're subscribing, they're in. They're like, okay, can't wait for the next one. But what's really important that we didn't cover that I think I already know what you're going to say, and a couple of people have commented on it, I think what's critically important is that after you launch, at this point, consistency is your number one mm -hmm. goal. You've got yeah. to stay consistent with it. And so I think you know you recommend once a week for um, being able to launch those episodes if possible. So I think that that consistency factor, so when you launch, whatever, whatever you do, whether it's one or three, the most important thing is that you follow through with a consistent schedule for those episodes. So- yeah, Definitely and one that, of those things. And it goes back to what we talked about earlier. I find that when people pod fade, it's what we call it in the podcast oh, biz. It's like Guilty. pod fade. It's like Guilty. oh, it's like we're going away. And when you ask people, when you I call myself a podcast therapist, because when people come to me and they're like, <laughs> I just, yeah, I've done this to Mel. I can't even tell you how many times. And it's usually her show notes. I use her as my example where she's like, I hate show notes. I'm like, Mel, yep. you don't have to do show notes. Like hate you, them. You could just not do them. You could just mm -hmm. make it very simple. So when I dig into the details, it's usually something that's not even related to podcasting. It's like a publishing thing or marketing thing or something that someone who has like, like a Joe Rogan size podcast are like, well, this is how he does it. So shouldn't I do it the same way? And I'm like, well, do you have a team of 20 people that run all of your pot? No, you don't. So you should lower the bar. I'm all about lowering the bar, lowering your expectations, because mm -hmm. that will be the thing that helps you be consistent. And like James Clear, I just reread the book Atomic Habits. It's Such like a good those, book. Those oh. little micro habits of you just showing up creates that consistency of you saying like, okay, this is what I need to do. If your episodes are 30 minutes and that overwhelms you, what about a 10 minute episode? Mm -hmm. And when I tell people this, I can literally see that like moment of like, you just blew my mind. I never, I thought I had to have it. And I'm like, no, there are no rules. Here's, mm -hmm. here's another secret. There are no rules in podcasting. Sure. There's guidelines. There's some things that you can follow to be successful, but you can do whatever you want. You make your own it's rules. Why I love it. Yes. <laughs> okay. I love, I love it. it. So All right. So Crystal, do you have about maybe 10 ish minutes to Let's just do it? fire through these questions. So, okay. Yeah. I've got some questions queued up. We're going to do rapid fire style. So okay. we've got the first one that was posted earlier in the show from the creator classroom. How Perfect. can podcasting be done on say how to, oh, yeah. on a how to channel like mine is how to use Canva for YouTube. So a how to channel that maybe is a little bit more visual focus. Do you, what are your thoughts on podcasting for that? So I have two thoughts for this one 
you could repurpose the content and you can just let people know, hey, this is a visual thing. So if it's a full step-by-step how-to tutorial, it may not be helpful as audio. And you may not see big growth and success on a podcast if it's stripped out of a purely visual platform. But what you could do instead is have your podcast serve your YouTube channel, meaning you could create short episodes that are, I'm, when I say f- I have a podcast that's five minutes or less, yep. I have a commitment that it will, all, I, I have so many episodes that are like 459. They do not go over that five minute mark, but I will record something and I'll be like, Hey, you know, these are your top Canva tips for the day. Like you could have a daily podcast you know, here's, here's how to upload videos. Here's how to use Instagram reels here. I mean, there's so many tips that I've learned from other Canva creators that you could just distill them down into your favorite ones. And you can air those twice a week if it's easier for you. But at the end of the day, you may have to look at a specific repurposing method for something that's too visual because it won't work in an audio platform as well as it would in a visual one. Yeah. And I, anytime this situation, this question comes up, I always tell people your podcast doesn't have to be the same content as your YouTube channel, but to Crystal's point, use the podcast to drive traffic to the YouTube channel. So it could be, you know, here's the latest new features of Canva. And it's just like a news report almost. So, and then they're like, Ooh, cool. And then basically, Oh, by the way, if you want to see how to do it, come over to the YouTube channel. So that's a perfect example. So love that. Okay. So Josh, who was hanging out with us over on uh, LinkedIn earlier, he's got a couple questions. How do you recommend searching for organization partners, sponsors to build out an indie podcast? Well, uh, Josh, I wish I knew the industry that you're in. Maybe I would have some specific recommendations. So Josh, if you're still here, drop those in the chat. But the thing that I do is I look at all the complementary products and services that are in my category. So for example, StreamYard is a great partner for me because they do podcasting related stuff. It's video podcasting, it's recording content. And so I look for people that would be a great fit for my specific audience. So I always look at tools that I love, tools that I use every single day in my business, tools that I know they're looking to grow for my specific audience. Like they want to get in front of my people. So that is the first place I always tell people to start. And then you can always get really creative with Googling, like Googling different companies. So if there's one that you think of, let's say it was, you know, StreamYard, for example, and you wanted to know, well, how do I partner with them? What does that look like? Start digging a little bit deeper and start engaging with that audience. This is how I feel like Mel and I got our start, like working with StreamYard is we started just being an advocate for the brand before anyone paid anybody to do anything. It's like, let me just tell you how much I love this app and how much it is helping me. So that is like step one. If you're to do anything today to take action on this, start being an evangelist for all the products and services that you love and they will take notice. Yeah, for sure. No, I love that. I think it's fantastic. And I do agree. Like get involved first, because if you're just some stranger, but if you, if they recognize you or know you, I think that's a great tip for sure. Okay. So Wendy Coop Savvy Budget Girl says, I have a web design business. How does that translate into a podcast? Oh, this is so good. So, um, Wendy, I actually have someone that is in my community and she helps people with their e-commerce platforms. She has a very technical podcast. It's called e-commerce made easy. So shout out to Carrie, but she has had this question too. She's like, well, how do I make it to where it's not so teaching? And like, you know, I'm talking in code basically (laughs) in this whole podcast, like, how do I you know, for lack of a better term, how do I dumb it down a little bit for people that are just getting started? Cause she has 20 plus years of experience. And I say, tell stories. Mm. Oh my gosh. Stories are the lifeblood of podcasting because why I love live streaming and I love creating YouTube videos. Like people, I have so many comments. People are like, get to the point. I just want the meat. Like get, just give me the step-by-step. Whereas on my podcast, I will get emails of people saying, I love that you talked about wrapping Christmas presents and watching Emily in Paris on your podcast. And I'm like, I said that? I don't, I don't even remember that. So <laughs> add in stories, stories of you, stories of your customers, stories of people that you help, like give specific examples 
of I did this for this person and here's how it works. So instead of so much of the technical teaching, really bring in those elements that round out the more human experience of what you do and the problems that you solve. Great question. Uh, I love that one. So um, I think we kind of already answered this one, but I still want to just address it. Um, so Mud Nuts Crazy World, should crafters have a podcast? I do diamond painting. So very similar to the Canva question that you had earlier about the, you know, I you know someone teaching Canva. So I think I, I you didn't mention the storytelling in regards to the Canva one, but I mean, yeah. you could totally incorporate that in like what inspires you? Where do you get inspired? And like just telling stories. But I think, you know, just as you said earlier, almost like just talk about the other elements or even pull in interviews, interview your customers, interview yes. people, interview industry experts. There's just so many layers to this content that doesn't have to be visual. Um, but I, I really liked what you said earlier about using the podcast to basically drive traffic towards your YouTube channel. So be thinking of it that way. That's what I would say for that one for sure. So, yeah. okay. So bo I wanna, oh, go ahead. I go just ahead. want to add on to that real fast because we talked about this earlier about just adding value. You could mm -hmm. be the go-to resource. You could tell people where to shop for tools. Oh, like, yeah. Hey, these are my favorite resources. Here's where you can find them. Like buy this during this season because they go on sale. So you could be kind of like the, the you just want to be the top of mind. This goes back to marketing. You want to be top of mind when they think about painting. It's like, who does that really well? Who can I go to for tutorials and tips? Well, if they're listening to your podcast and they're reminded, oh yeah, they have a YouTube channel. Let me go check it out. And that's where I should go. Mm, I love that. I love that. Love that. Okay. So by the way, Josh commented, he said, I focus on practical applications for personal values, belonging, boundaries, and burnout. Oh, that is such good podcast content right there. Yes. That kind of stuff. Any of that like mental, just, you know, anything that's like the, all those kind of inspirational things and all those are like such so good for podcasting because people are in a different mindset when they're listening to your point. When you talked about stories, I think people enjoy like, again, you're on a walk, you're, you're doing whatever, you're in the car, like you want to listen to stories. But when you're researching something on YouTube, you just want to learn it and get to the point. So I well, definitely think podcasting could be great. Yes. And what he what he's talking about. So um, he was looking for sponsors yep. for indie podcasters. Uh, reach out to BetterHelp. I know they advertise across all these other podcasts. So pay attention to what ads mm. that you're hearing on these other shows because they're already doing it. You're not trying to convince someone that's not investing in podcasting to invest in your podcast, especially if you have a smaller show. It can be really challenging, really difficult. So find those companies like pay. I, I am hyper aware of who's in the industry, who's playing the game. And then I would go to them. I'd be like, reach out to BetterHelp and say, hey, this is my podcast. It's what it's about. It's about personal values, belonging, boundary, like it's perfect to, you know, advertise to my audience. So do that kind of investigative marketing and that can help you reach the right people. I like that. That's good. Okay. So bowling with the FEF coming in with kind of a loaded question here. So okay. if we, if we can answer it, let's answer it. But if we, it's, I'm, I, it's kind of making my mind spin a little bit. So okay. what's, you know why it's because he says, what's the best most cost-effective bowling with the FEF <laughs> way to give it to us. Uh, he's a, he's definitely a regular uh, audience member of the show, so I can tease him a little bit. What's the best, most cost of cost-effective way to repurpose a live stream as a podcast? Keep the rights to your content, but also monetize the podcast too. So I'm going to break this down real fast, Crystal. The monetization is not doesn't come in. There's no no worry there, right? So if you're if you have a live stream and then you want to repurpose it as a podcast, is there a concern about being able to monetize it because it's also a video out there somewhere? No. So what okay. I was going to say is what you should do is you should package it all together and say, Hey, you can actually pay a little bit more money and I'll talk about it on the live stream. And that is baked into the podcast. But if they're not paying you, like, let's say you have a mid roll in your live stream where it's like, Hey, this, you mm -hmm. know, this live stream today is sponsored by blah, blah, blah. You can tell them, Hey, because you only paid me for the live stream, I'm actually going to repurpose it and I'm going to cut it out of my podcast unless you want to pay me a premium. So it's like an add on feature. So, I mean, this could work in your favor. If you already have sponsored content, you're offering this other channel of distribution to get in front of what could be an overlap of an audience, but it's likely going to be two separate audiences on YouTube and one on your podcast. And for you to be able to say, Hey, I'll sweeten the deal for you. You're already paying me for the live stream. I actually am launching a podcast and I will let all of these ads live there, but I mean, you should get paid for what you're worth. So, and, I, yeah. and that, and that is in regards to partnerships or the sponsorship yeah. aspects, yeah. but if, but when it comes to monetization for 
There's no, no, like, I'm just asking this question for clarity. So if I have a podcast and I have a YouTube and I'm using that video on YouTube and I'm, I'm, I'm monetized on YouTube, yeah. I'm not. But what I'm saying is if I am, and basically that means YouTube paying me based on my yeah. watch hours and whatnot, can I repurpose that content as an audio podcast or does that violate anything? Do Or do you know? If you don't know, that's okay. That, to I don't my think knowledge, it does. I use it everywhere. I You will yeah. see the same content on my YouTube channel as it is on my yeah. podcast. The only thing is those I shouldn't get paid for the podcast because the distribution is different. They don't know yeah. enough about my podcast users and it's a totally separate platform. So the mm -hmm. IP is mine. I own my YouTube videos. I own my audio files. I have not sold that to anybody else. So even if it's on the YouTube platform, I own that original content, that original file, whether it's a live stream or it's an audio only. So that's my way check with your legal counsel because I am not a lawyer and I don't well, know exactly. what for saying Caveat, that. caveat, <laughs> caveat. And neither is StreamYard. So nope, but none of us, yeah. none of us. So <laughs> we are not your legal resource. Okay, so we've got a few more questions and then I'm definitely going to pop up your boot camp that you have that okay. is a free offer for everybody that's a freebie for them. So, so Data's King asked this question. You mentioned it earlier. When brainstorming, oh, yeah. how do you determine a good idea from a bad one? You put it out there. You put it out there and you see, because at the end of the day, what I have found is I will think something is a good idea and then I go to record it and I'm like, this just sounds clunky or I can't get through it. So if you find yourself in that process, it's not a good idea, but at face value, I could sit down and write a whole list of things that I want to talk about, but it's really not until I get into the planning stage of like building out an outline, putting bullet points or, you know, whatever you're doing at planet. If I come up with like, really don't want to talk about this. Like if you, like I trust my gut so much of the time, like my content creation, my strategy comes from just trusting myself and the things where I know I will be energetic about it. I will be fired up about it. But if I go to record something and I'm like, well, yeah. And then I decided to do this. And then I thought, well, maybe I should do that. And it's real. It just like takes me out of my element. It's a bad idea. Run away from those. So Love that. really gravitate towards things that light you up. Oh, that's a good tip. That's a really good tip because if you don't and you keep sharing content of stuff that doesn't let you up, now you're accidentally creating a channel that you're not passionate about so, or a sure. podcast. So, okay. So uh, I've got this question here. That's going to be our last question today. And then I'm going to talk about this boot camp. So you all says question, how do you get guests? Oh, this is a good one. I know, it, could be its own, it could be its own show. I'm like, Asking your network. This is where I always tell people I started. So the first 10 episodes of the very beginning of my podcast journey, I asked people that I knew that I went to school with, that I knew from friends of friends that I knew that were in this specific like entrepreneurial niche that I was trying to be a part of. And that's where I got started. And from there, I started posting on social like, hey, I'm looking for a guest for this type of show. So you have to be dialed in to who your audience is, because then other people will know know, oh, I could speak to that audience. I would love to come on and talk about live streaming and podcasting, or I, you know, know someone that knows someone. So start with your network, because what I have found is just putting out kind of a, a blanket statement of like into like a large Facebook group, let's say, and it is very generic. You don't know what you're going to get. It's a crapshoot of what the guests are going to be. Those were some of my worst, worst interviews. So having some sort of personal connection will absolutely help you stand out. And what I've also noticed is usually after someone launches a show, people will find you. Mm -hmm. People like you'll get email. I get emails and they're not as bad as they used to be, but I will still get emails from random people that I'm like, I don't know how they found me or this, like, this is not like, nope, they're not a good fit. Move on. <laughs> like bless and release those people from, you know, your list of people that could potentially be on the show. But Start with your network, start asking around, telling people what you're doing, and hopefully you will get connected to someone that can help you. And then this is another secret tip is once you finish that episode, you're done with that interview and you're in the green room with the guests, you say, hey, I'm looking for more guests like you. Do you have someone that you would recommend? And they may recommend another podcast for you to listen to or someone that they've talked to, but start just by that organic marketing and like expanding your network. Yeah, no, I love the idea of, of starting with your network, but then also don't be afraid to ask for more yeah. connections for sure. But I also want to point out really quick, because I think, again, it's another feature that people don't realize is right inside the StreamYard studio. So when you go to your StreamYard studio, 
down here to the left, you're going to see this little section that says Find Guests. And when you click on that, it's going to open up what's called Collab by StreamYard. And it you can go make sure you create your own profile, put your show information in here. You can absolutely find people all over the place that are already creating content. And you can actually connect with them right inside the collab feature of StreamYard. So everybody has access to this. Oh. You absolutely want to jump in there and do that as well. Because guess what? If they've created a profile and they're in here, it's highly likely that they're looking for, they're, they're doing guest appearances or even, um, you know, looking for guests to be on their show as well. So I definitely wanted to point that out really quick because I do think it's a, an, un, an one of those little known features right inside the stream studio. There. I just yeah. like never, yeah. never knew. So I'm right there, do down there, access. check it out, get in there, create your own profile and you can message people right inside there as well. It's actually a pretty awesome little platform. Again, still kind of, it's a little bit in beta, but it's been around for a little while now and it's starting to grow. So there's a lot of um, really great people in there. Yeah. Um, I don't, I know some of these people that are showing up, but you know, they, hopefully they don't mind that I'm showing them right there inside the thing. So, okay. So Crystal, let's, I want to share uh, with everybody who's been patiently waiting and hanging out with us before we close today. Why don't you tell us um, a little bit about if my mouse will work for me here, talk to us about this boot camp oh, that you've yes. got this free boot yes, camp yes. you have. And, wh and while you're doing that, I'm actually going to uh, put a link uh, up here in the show. Oh, no, we don't want that one. We want this one. There we go. There we go. That's great. I like yeah. the custom layouts. I like the That's, custom layout. So oh, fancy. I like Yeah. That. So tell us about this boot camp. Yeah. So this used to be my five day podcast boot camp. So it used to be you get a video every single day over five days and I walk you through how podcasting works. And I was like, it's 2023. People want the fast, like give me the microwave version of podcasting. So I shrunk everything down into five minutes. And what this is, it's a five minute training video where I'm walking you through. I use a tool called Miro. If you are familiar with like whiteboard tools and workflows, and I show you exactly what it takes. So the prep method broken down into the different stages. And I walk you through, this is exactly what you need to plan. This is exactly what you need to record for editing, for publishing, for marketing, everything is in there, but it's stretched out into all the little subtasks and pieces underneath. So at the very least, what you could have is an incredible start for you to have a great checklist for your podcast that can help you be successful. So go check it out. It, it's literally, I think it's like five minutes and 34 seconds with like the intro. So I promise it will be, yeah, I'll, so you should call for you to get in. You should call it the five minute, 34 second boot camp. That's what you should do. <laughs> Come on. It's not as sexy. It's not as sexy. I think it's super title. sexy. I think it sounds like a hoot nanny. So <laughs> I don't know who's I don't know who's in the comments today for me uh, with streamer, but somebody somebody from the team posted everybody take a shot every time Mel says hoot nanny. So yes. <laughs> I, don't, I have my suspicions for who's posting that comment from the Streamyard team, but it's a little early for that. But it is Friday. It, it is, is Friday. Friday. <laughs> anyway. All right. So Crystal, fantastic. So I went ahead and put a link to that in the notes down below, everybody, so that you see um, you can click that. You can't click on this down there, the banner, because it's on the screen. But if you are watching from Facebook, uh, the Facebook page or our YouTube channel, you can absolutely click on the link I just put in the comments. But you can also go to crystalprofit.com, which is in the description of this stream where you're watching. And you can access this as well as all kinds of Crystal's amazing stuff, including her book, which is a fantastic book that you mentioned, How to Start a Binge-Worthy Podcast. So uh, not only do I bring it today uh, with my friend, but I bring the real stuff here. So a published author uh, over here helping everybody launch and grow and monetize their podcast. So Crystal, this has been fantastic. Thank you so, so, so much for being here today. I, lo I love how generous you are with your time and I love how you broke down how to start a podcast because, you know, I wanted people to be inspired. I wanted people who were maybe they've been waffling about creating a podcast and now I hope that they now feel more confident in what that process can look like so that they can be successful to start their podcast the right way. So thank you so, so much for being here today. It was so awesome and so fun. I love you dearly, my friend, and I can't wait to chat with you again, maybe here on the show uh, again for sure. So yes. hopefully you have a great rest of your day, Crystal. Thank you so much for being here. Thank y'all. Well, there you have it, everybody. That was super fun. I got to say, I always like bringing... Crystal is one of my favorite people to talk to about things because she breaks it down in such a 
digestible manner. So if you just joined us and you're kind of catching us at the end, make sure you go back and watch the replay because Crystal broke down her little prep method about how to basically get your podcast, launch it successfully, get it going. So it's the essentials of starting a podcast. And she's also got that boot camp, of course, that she's got available for you. It's really similar content. So if you want that quick five minute, 34 second version, you can absolutely get it there too. So again, thank you everybody for hanging out with us today and joining us on the show. As always, I appreciate all of you for always being here live. And I hope you have an awesome weekend. I will see y'all in a couple of weeks back here, right here on all of the channels where we're streaming from today. So, and if you have not yet already subscribed to our YouTube channel, I would like to invite you to do that because there's so many great videos being published over there to help you do more things with your live shows. And then of course, over on the Facebook group, make sure you're joining us over there as well. If you have other questions about podcasting or anything like that, Crystal is in that group as well. And we have lots of great people that can help you and answer your questions. So I will see y'all next time. I'm going to get out of here. Until then, I'll talk to y'all later. Let me get my little screen up. I'm I'm off in my brand here. Hold on a second. I got to get back to where I want to go. So anyway, all right, everybody. Have a good day. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.